So your first C-sharp program will consist of a form with one button on it and when the user clicks on that button the form's background will turn blue. In the previous video we already created the Lecture 1 Exercise 1 project. So instead of starting a new project I'm going to the recent projects and I click on Lecture 1 Exercise 1 to open up that project. So we haven't done any programming or we haven't put anything on the interface. So the controls, as we said, appear in the toolbox. Um, we want to put a button on the form. So there are two ways in which you can place a control on the form. You can either double click on it and then it will place it there in the corner at the top. And then you can drag it to wherever you want it. Um, the other way to put it on the form, I just deleted that one is to drag it from the toolbox onto the form, into the position that you want it. Okay. But then there are little handles that you can drag to make the control bigger. And as you saw, we can move it around on the screen. Okay, so we've created our button. And now we can change its properties. So as we said in the previous video, the properties window appears in the right hand corner at the bottom. It might be in a different place on your um, interface. Usually it appears here. So at the moment you see that form 1 is showing there. And that is because form 1 is the selected control. You can see that by the handles. If we click on the button and it, the button becomes a, the active control, it, the name button one will appear over there and this means that the currently visible properties in the properties list belong to the, the button one button. Okay, so now the first property that we want to change is the text property of the button. So if it's not showing you can scroll up and down through all the properties but find the text property and change the text property to Blue. If you press enter, you will see on the button, on the form, the text changes to blue. Every control has a name property. So the button will also have a name property. And in the beginning, one tends to confuse the text property and the name property. The text property is the text that appears on the button. The name property is the name that we will use when we write program code and we want to refer to that button in our program. We will use this name. Okay, so find the name property and then change that to btn blue. Okay. We always start the name of a control with three small letters that indicate what kind of control it is. So for buttons, we will have btn. For a label control, we will have LBL and so on. And then the first letter following on the three small letters indicating the type of control is a capital letter and what follows is something that explains what this button does. So far we've placed the button on the form, uh, we've changed its text property to blue so that it says blue on the button and we've changed its name to BTN blue. The next step is to write a program statement that will cause the background of the form to turn blue when we click on the button. Okay. Let me just show you, we can already run this program. Even if we haven't got any code, we can click on start over there. Right. Now, this form appears, this is the program is now running. So it shows us our form with our button named blue. And we can now click on this button. But when we click on the button, nothing happens. The form's background doesn't turn blue. And that's because we haven't attached the code to the blue button that will make the form turn blue. Okay. So you must also make sure that you distinguish between the design mode and the run mode of the program. We are currently in run mode, so we have a form um, of the running program visible. You can also see down here 
a little icon that shows the program is running. So if this is the case, you cannot go back to your code and change the program code. You have to close the program first. So we can close our program by clicking on the cross there. Okay, now we're back in design mode where we can write our program. To write the code attached to the blue button, we're going to double click on the blue button and this opens up some program code. Okay, now there are lots of statements already there that you can see that are generated by Visual Studio for us. Those statements must stay there. You cannot change them. If you delete parts of them, there will be errors. Okay, what we are interested in now is this part of the code. So there's a line that says private void button blue click object sender events asked. If you look at that part, it gives us the name of the event handler. So the event handler is where we're going to put the code that will be executed when that event occurs. In this case, the event is the click event associated with button blue. That means when the user clicks on button blue, this piece of code will be executed. So whatever statements we write in here will be, be executed. Okay. So don't worry too much about all the other stuff like private void and the things between brackets there. As we go along in the course, we will explain all of those. It's just important that you don't delete that or change it. We want to write the program statement that will turn the form's background color to blue. And it looks like this. This back color and see we use the American spelling you can see a box pops up here let me just go back a bit so the moment I type the full stop there I can see a list of things that could come after this I want to change the back color and if I type the B I can see the back color appearing there so I can just click on that to, and then it will bring up that statement or you can type it out it doesn't really matter okay equals and then color again dot and here you can then choose a color and we want to change the color to blue and we end the statement with a semicolon okay. right so this is our complete program if we now run the program I'm just going to move the form to the center. If I now click on blue, the form's background turns blue. So if you did this successfully, you've written your first free Visual C Sharp program. Well done. Okay, let's just go through this again. Okay, if I want to go back to the form view, you see there at the top are two tabs. There's form.cs and form.cs design. Now if I click on the design tab, I go back to the form to go to the code again I can click there okay so what happened is we double clicked on the button to open up the button blue click event handler or event procedure and between the two brackets very important those two brackets are very important they tell you where the button blue click event start and where it ends so there we type the statement this dot back color color blue. Now what is this? The code that we're writing is in is associated with the form that we created. So you will see it says the public partial clause form one form, and that is that form that we were placing the button on. Okay, so all the code is attached to that. And if we want to refer in our program code to the form itself, we use the word this. So this in this context means this form that we've created. Okay. So this dot back color means the back color of the current form must be set equal to blue. Just for interest sake, if we go to our form and we make sure the form is the selected control and we find the back color property here, you see that we can also set the form's back color property during design time. So 
we could have chosen it is the system web or custom say custom yeah we could have changed to blue here yeah. but we didn't do that because we wanted the button to change the forms background to blue okay, a very important part of writing a program is saving it because if you don't save your program you're going to lose it if we close visual studio now and we come back we will have lost everything that we've done so far okay, so to save it we say file and then very importantly save all not save form one not save form one as always use save all okay there are various ways in which you can do it there's save all over there if you look at the menu there the two little um, discs show you the save all or you can use Control shift s the reason why you have to use save all is because a visual studio project consists of all of these files and if you don't say save all it will only save the program.cs if you just say save it will save only the one file and you will not have your whole program